we up here yet? There you go. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm uh, Alex Altman, the CEO of Seal Storage Technology. We're a storage provider based out of North America with operations in Montreal, Canada, Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, both of the data centers are run fully on renewable energy, and we've got about 25 petabytes between the two uh, data centers. We've been really focused on, as a company, commercializing Web3 over the last year and a half. So focusing on bringing real data in, into the Filecoin ecosystem with a particular focus on universities and uh, research institutions. In terms of the cloud storage market globally, right now it's at about an $80 billion industry and it's expected to grow at a 25% year-over-year growth. We believe that with the advancement of technology between what the storage provides are building and what Filecoin is building, that we can be a large disruptor in this marketplace and continue to grab market share out of the other major incumbents. Furthermore, as of today, approximately 60% of all data is considered to be archival data. That number is expected to grow to be 80% of all data in existence by 2025 to be considered archival. Of that 80%, about 60% of that data is sitting on magnetic tape, which is a technology that is significantly closer to Web 1 than Web 3, and presents a number of different challenges when you're considering the amount of data that's actually stored on that type of technology. First is high data loss, or high potential for data loss, in terms of the degradation of the physical tape itself, the slow retrieval sp speeds for customers, because you actually have to go get the tape, get the data off the tape, onto the internet, over to the customer. So it can be very slow, very expensive, and not a particularly efficient way for people to consume data. And finally, that leads to poor service level agreements, because it can take up to weeks to get access to your data, which is just an inefficient way to be storing data at this day and age. So decentralized cloud storage has verifiable and immutable data, uh, significantly faster retrieval speeds, and cryptographically enforced SLAs, which means that good actors in the system are actually getting paid to continue to be good actors, and then negative actors in the space are being penalized in terms of slashing. So in a centralized ecosystem, most users will essentially onboard their data to a Web2 uh, solution for free. They'll pay monthly fees, but they really get caught up in the egress charges, and that's where Web2 makes all their money. A great example of this is NASA made a deal with AWS to store 250 petabytes of data a year, which was worth $60 million, but forgot to account for the approximately $30 million of egress fees they have to pay in a year. So that's a 50% increase in their data storage budget. So what, what actually happens with that is a lot of these research departments, universities, they upload large-scale data into these Web2 providers they, for free. They pay monthly fees, and they can't get access to that data again because egress fees are so high. So they get stuck in a vicious cycle of constantly accruing more and more fees for data that they have no access to, and they're stuck with the difficult decision to either delete the data and stop the bleeding from a financial perspective, or to actually go out and get additional capital to get the money or get the data off of um, that that, those platforms. So Filecoin, on the other hand, we actually place value on the data and it's continued storage as opposed to charging customers an arm and a leg to get access to that data because we believe it's important. And Seal Storage, our company has spent millions of dollars and several years building software on ramps so that these, these customers can get all the benefits of decentralized storage without minimal changes to their existing software stack. So in terms of archival storage, uh, we believe this is really the area that Filecoin thrives at the moment. So archival storage can really be considered something that is accessed relatively infrequently, but when it needs to be accessed, you should get near instant access to get it. Um, so it's also backup storage for multi-years or essentially infinite amount of time. So our goal is really to replace resource-intensive tape storage systems, and that's what we've been working with these institutions that I'm going to talk about a little bit later in order to do is get their data out from Web 1 and push it all the way into Web 3. Uh, so some of the benefits on the egress side of things and transparent pricing, data is stored in a mutable worm, write once, read many format, which is Filecoin, uh, and data integrity and verified daily through the consensus mechanism, the proof of space time, and those daily reference checks. So from a large organization perspective, they can be relatively apprehensive to change or try out new technologies because they don't understand how it may affect their existing way of doing business or their way of, do, of accessing data. 
plus some of them have been burned before with Web2 providers. So what we've really tried to do is build this middleware connection point so that people can actually feel all these you know, immutability, verifiability, and establish a chain of custody of their data without needing to understand the complexities of you know, a token model or a blockchain. And that's really been the key to starting to get people to understand how they can benefit from this and bringing on people uh, into the Web3 world from Web2 that would otherwise not necessarily have gotten here for a few years. So again, speaking to a lot of the customers that we have and the groups that we've disclosed and going to disclose, these seem to be consistent pain points. It's that egress fee, accessibility, and uh, security. Um, these researchers are really deeply connected to their data, and it helps them continue to further their research. So it's very important that the sanctity of their data is protected. So the solution that we have is low cost, custom APIs, and the global distribution. So it removes the single point of failure. Um, and the data that we're storing at this point is, is mostly significant uh, historical or scientific data. So more specifically on how this works with a collaborator, financial, there's you know, a couple of petabytes of storage for a certain amount of time. This leads into development, talking to customers, understanding what exactly they need, how can we come in and replace existing cloud um, infrastructure that they have to become the predominant and preeminent solution uh, going forward from Web2 and overtake some of the previous providers. And from the technical side of things, they've got that zero um, or removal of the one attack vector in terms of a single point of failure because there's multiple copies stored across multiple geographies. Um, two of them. So over the year, we've been lucky to announce, or been very excited to announce uh, a number of different partnerships. We announced a partnership with Berkeley in Phil Austin around consensus. Uh, and last two weeks, or I guess two weeks ago, we were at the IEEE conference, invited by the University of Utah at Salt Lake City to discuss uh, work that we've been doing with them and presented there. And I'm going to talk about our newest public partnership that's announced today, and we'll be pushed out further later this afternoon in terms of what we're doing with them. So from a, uh, a Berkeley perspective, uh, we had uh, Dr. Tanner Kaptangalu come to uh, Phil Austin with us and actually talk about what the deployment meant to them at Berkeley. So they do neutrino research and dark matter research in the underground physics group. So they're looking for rare events, which means they have a very large set of data, but they're looking for small slivers of data within that set. So the integrity of that data is of the utmost importance to them, which is where that immutability kicks in. And then the verifiability is in those constant checks that we have for Filecoin that they know they can always look back at past research and compare it to current research and see the difference and actually build on um, a consistent train of, uh, of immutable research over time. Uh, the geographic distribution, they've got collaborators all around the world, and of course affordability was, was helpful for them. Uh, the Univers University of Utah, we've been working with the Center for Extreme Data Management, Analysis, and Visual Visualization. Specifically, they're researching combustion simulations, earth and satellite data. The elements for them were largely on the egress side of things and the global distribution, as well as data accessibility. Researchers at, at times are apprehensive to share the research around the world, and it's not because they don't want others to have access to that and others to iterate and learn from it, but it's because they're concerned about the egress fees that they have to face when they actually want to move it from one place to the next. So this was something for them that unlocked global partnerships and gives them the ability to share their data with significantly more sources and allows people to build on that data. So today, we're really, really excited. We think we're announcing one of the largest deployments of Web3 technologies so far in existence. And we've been working on this for the last, I'd say, eight or so months. So I'm excited today to announce that we've been working with the Atlas experiment at CERN. So what exactly does that mean? <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, so the ALICE experiment at CERN is a general purpose particle physics experiment at the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, one of the world's largest and most respected research institutions. ATLAS specifically is one of the largest uh, collaboration ever, ever attempted in the scientific community with over 5,500 members and almost 3,000 scientific authors. The detector is the largest volume uh, detector ever constructed in, in a particle uh, collider. In terms of the amount of data they produce when it's actually active, over a billion particle interactions take place at Atlas Detector every second, a data rate equivalent to 20 sim simultaneous uh, telephone conversations held by every single person on the planet at the same time. Uh, the detector is used to investigate physics, including a Higgs boson, top quark, and the search for extra, dimen yeah, extra dimensions. The main goal is to understand the building blocks of matter and the fundamentals of life. So the deployment with CERN is a 10 petabyte pilot in the Atlas experiment. 
uh, the, yeah, the Atlas experiment at CERN. Uh, with the help of Atlas and CERN, we've been able to fully integrate into the Rusio data management software and the file transfer service. And we've been adjusting data for the last couple months and will continue to do so um, as we go forward. In terms of uh, the level of excitement from the team at Atlas, they believe there's an enormous possibility for expansion based on the amount of data that they're able to create. So the project itself uh, generates tens of petabytes per year, and the demand for archival storage with them is quickly outpacing the current capacity. So they're looking for solutions out there where they can get these types of advantages, but also house this type of data, and they're looking at um, decentralized storage as a, as a possibility and working with us on, on deployment. So the benefits that uh, provide are very similar to the ones that you've, you've heard before from the Berkeley and the Utah discussion. One, it's the, the immutability um, and the data, yeah, the immutability and verification of the data because it's regularly checking for data corruption and involuntary modifications. For a group this large that has 5,500 different members all across the planet, it's very important for them to have data authenticity so that they're all looking at the same stuff and making sure that their experiments are all based on the same series of information um, and that they can all store it in a fashion that uh, the data is safe and secure. On top of that, we've got a trusted group of uh, other storage providers around the world that are helping us store this data, which provides consistent access as well as uh, gets rid of the threat of a single point of failure here. So I mean, in terms of each one of these deployments that we've had with these groups, they all have somewhat bespoke uh, requirements. But these three things th seem to be the most common when working with them. So data integrity, uh, as mentioned in all three of them, everybody cares about deeply about what their data is, how it's being stored, the fact that it's not incorruptible, and that they can continue to build on that and then share that accurate data with other contributors across the world. Efficient and cost effective. We believe that at the moment, de de decentralized storage is both the most co cost effective but the best application for archival storage currently available today and uh, significantly faster data analysts, uh, analysis and turnaround. Um, so it's basically providing a semi-cloud-like experience but in our archival ecosystem. So at this point in time, we think this is absolutely the best place for people to be putting archival data uh, and we're seeing that with the traction that we've had. So in terms of where we are today, I think we're in the later stages of the early adopters. Uh, with people like Berkeley, the Atlas Experiment, and the University of Utah, and a number of other deployments that we've had that we'll continue to talk about. There's kind of always more announcements ready to go. Uh, we believe that it's consistently pushing decentralized storage uh, and Web3 further into uh, that early majority category and crossing the chasm, uh, and therefore pushing it into the, the global ecosystem. Uh, so we expect, as the work that we're doing and a lot of the other work that the other storage providers are doing, bringing fantastic deals into the ecosystem, we'll continue to get people comfortable with this deployment and also, um, as us and others continue to develop the technology, we'll make it easier and easier for people to get into Web3 and we'll get them more and more comfortable with how to do so. So we at SEAL firmly believe that the next generation of platforms will be built on the decentralized web, unlocking the benefits for the next economy, which is true ownership, security, and verifiability of data. Thank you, everybody, for, for attending. If you want to learn more, you can take a look at our website or reach out to us over email. There's also going to be a uh, couple of tweets put out by the Atlas Experiment later today, and they've put out an entire blog post on their official blog detailing the uh, extent of our partnership and a number of different elements of what we've been doing with them. So if you're interested, take a look at that after the uh, event. Thank you.